then uh, information, uh, you can text the Will Foster or Wendell F at 81010 for updates, uh, news and updates. If you use, uh, use cell phones for that, you can text that number. And uh, one, one other final thing is uh, a policy update that I wanted to share with you uh, pertaining to separation of employment. And I don't mean to bring the news down here. We know that all of you all are going to be be here hopefully for, for the rest of your working days, but this pertains to rehire eligibility. Uh, I think there was some misconception at one time that if you gave a two-week notice that you were automatically eligible for rehire, and uh, that was never really the intended uh, message in, in, the, in the policy. So we've done a little bit of revision to that policy that just states that Rehire eligibility will be determined based on job performance while employed as well as your resignation status. Again, I'm not trying to premeditate any of your resigning, but uh, we just wanted to make sure that, that everybody was kind of clear on that policy. The policy, uh, there's printouts over here if anybody wants to pick up one on their way out. Uh, I know we're running a little bit behind here, so I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to the lab, and she's going to be talking to us about her practice. Okay, sorry, I'm trying to get
compliment might be appreciated from one coworker, but from another, it might seem too personal. A hug or friendly touch from a friend might be just fine, but from one person, it might feel like an invasion of personal space. A comment that amuses some, but actually offend others. We do have relationships with others in the workplace. We may even touch one another sometimes at the workplace. The question is trying to give uh, individuals who are likely to engage in that behavior a sense of when it can be a problem. And it can be a problem when you don't know what the potential reaction of the recipient is. Okay, so what is unique about the two interactions between um, the waiter and the chef with the other What were the differences? Well, one was welcoming and the other was not. One was welcoming, one was not. Body language, what else? Right, exactly. So why do you think that was? Because she was more comfortable with the waiter than she was um, with the chef. Okay. I guess um, more on the professional level with the chef, that that was inappropriate to her. So she probably had a relationship or knew the waiter a little bit better, had a friendship or something, so felt more comfortable with that versus the chef who may uh, put his arm around her and kept trying to engage with her. And she uh, definitely made it clear. Do you think she made it clear? How did she make it clear that she was up on <coughs> Body language? What else? Shortness, comments, what else? She clearly said, I'm busy.
just globally, nationwide. You think we have a disrespect problem going on? Oh, absolutely. Why do you think that?
each person in authority is crucial to creating respect in the workplace. Again, that's not just those in the management role or those in different areas. That's all of us. So it's all of our responsibility to make sure that we make the workplace free of harassment. <coughs> Again, we talked about the process, <coughs> target, observer, and people in authority. But I want you to talk, think about this down here at the bottom. Care about what you say and how you say it before you say it. And how you say something make a big impact on the person you communicate with. Why do you think that? His head's nodding. Tone of voice. Tone of voice has a big impact on how your, your communication is intercepted. What about body language? No, I'm not mad. What do you all think?
But numerous studies show that disrespectful work environments lead to a disengaged, unhappy workforce. In fact, a recent Gallup poll estimates that in the U.S. alone, employers spend more than $300 billion annually due to disengaged employees. A respectful workplace fosters security, appreciation, and efficiency. And when it comes to sexual harassment, a truly respectful workplace is significantly less likely to have problems with inappropriate behaviors. When the tone of your office is professional and respectful, employees are much more likely to keep crude jokes to themselves. A respectful workplace doesn't just happen, it's built carefully by everyone from upper management to the newest employee. Respect can't be a program or project, it's a way of life at work. To begin with, I recommend creating a respect initiative. This can be a simple document that outlines the expectation of respectful behavior. The respect initiative should define respect and outline the types of behaviors embraced by the organization. These can include demonstrating appreciation, encouraging open dialogues, and having respectful conversations and disagreements, as well as the inclusion of everyone in the work process. You should also choose to include behaviors that will not be tolerated, such as shutting down others' ideas or any type of harassment or put-downs. Make it clear that everyone in the office contributes and everyone should be treated with respect. Supervisors and managers can also make respect a hiring variable. When considering a new employee, is he or she respectful to everyone in the office? Pay attention to how an interviewee treats anyone who might be perceived to have a less significant job. This stuff matters. A potential hire who snubs the receptionist will continue to be a jerk after he or she is hired. You can even ask a few questions about respect at work, using scenario-based questions about sexual harassment or sharing of ideas. This does two things. It makes it clear from the very beginning that your business does not tolerate disrespectful or harassing behavior, and these questions help weed out those who might add tension or discord to your workplace. If your organization has the opportunity, it's worthwhile to add a culture champion to the team. This person's job would be to promote a healthy and respectful workplace culture. The culture champion can also be someone who counsels employees on harassment situations or other negative company interactions. Having a trained professional handle these situations skillfully can be invaluable to an organization. Part of a respectful culture is keeping all interactions elevated and productive. No one should have to tolerate name-calling or insults while at work, even if there is a disagreement. These types of interactions open the door to sexual harassment and workplace harassment if they are allowed to continue. If this is an issue at your workplace, seek out training on how to positively disagree and resolve an argument. Managers should be trained to step in before situations get heated, giving everyone time and space to cool down. Then reconvene and sort things out respectfully. You can also provide employees with a list of respectful phrases to try out. Yes, this does seem a bit elementary, but you'll be surprised how much it can help. In addition to respectful disagreement and language, respect is fostered through support. Remember to show your colleagues how much you appreciate their efforts. Taking the time to recognize another person's contributions improves team morale and your work environment. Managers can also create opportunities for employees to support each other. Creating team-oriented projects, or sharing personal achievements with permission, of course, can connect a team and bring everyone together. And finally, make respect part of your performance evaluations. When everyone on the team knows respect as part of the evaluation process, they'll know the company is serious about creating a respectful workplace. And if you have a respect issue, address it immediately. Remember, when it comes to a respectful workplace, tackling any problems head-on will limit how much it impacts everyone on your team.
Everybody know what boss is?
words and emails that you wouldn't use to someone's face. Okay? Great job. All right, last group. Everybody gone? Huh? We went. Okay. We got everybody? All right, so what I want to do is I want to make sure we collect these because what we're going to do is collect all the different group of sessions that we've had, type these lists up, and then we're going to give them back to Wendell Foster.